what season are we on is it hot girl summer soft girl summer hot bitch summer healing girl era i have no idea i lost track but honestly welcome to your healing era welcome to your spiritual exploration your spiritual journey whether you're just getting started or you've been in it for quite some time or you've been in and out of it for quite some time it doesn't matter there's a couple of foundations about your healing journey that is true across the board and oftentimes when you are starting your healing era it can feel really exciting but also really dense because you're discovering some things you're unveiling some things things that are coming up the shadow work the confusion the you know perspective changes that happen it can feel overwhelming it can feel isolating it can also feel just like what's the point right like it just feels like you're doing all this stuff and what 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 are you going to find on the other end of that i wanted to equip you with four things that's going to be helpful for your healing era and i honestly don't even know what these four things are going to be they're just channeling through me and i'm feeling called to share with you and especially because the healing journey at least for myself i know there was so much isolation and so much confusion and so much feeling like i'm the only one who's going through this and there's almost this like you know I don't want to bother people because they don't get what I'm going through kind of vibe when the truth of it is a couple of steps outside from that there's many people who are going through very similar things very similar issues very similar problems very similar concerns and it's important that we kind of just open up the dialogue and say like hey if I knew these things in in the beginning it might have you know solved me a couple of days of crying might have solved me some pain it might have solved me some things uh, I of course don't regret having gone through that but now that I'm on the other side I hope that it can also help you feel a little empowered as you're on your healing journey so the first thing you have to understand is that healing doesn't look the same for everybody and everybody uses different tools and methodologies to pursue their healing so you might discover something that is working for somebody else and they're just like you know you got to try this like you got to go to this kind of class and you got to go to this person you got to go to this coach this healer this per right like they're they they're so enthusiastic about the thing and the tool that they discovered because they had such a unique and profound experience with that particular tool or modality when the truth of it is that there isn't one thing or another that supports you in your healing it's you making a decision that you're gonna go through it <laughs> like you're gonna go face the darkness the shadows the toxicity the things that aren't working and at the end of the day you have to attach you you have to detach the meaning of what tool that you're using because tools are just tools they're the vehicles that get you to the feeling gets you to that understanding gets you to that awareness but there's so many different roads that can get you to a destination right there's so many different pathways and vehicles and modalities and people and and teachings and perspectives and lineages and religions that can get you to the same thing and so if you're hyper attached to one way being the thing you might actually be neglecting your own inner understanding of what you already know you need to do you know if something's not resonating with you you don't need to force yourself to resonate with that it's a resonance resonance means that something is vibrating at the same frequency as you so something's not resonating for you it might not be the tool for you and the things that you need to know it's not a never maybe it's just not resonating right now maybe it will later maybe you'll be like oh my gosh now i get it but there are certain things that are just not going to work for you and it's important to kind of discern when people and other people are going through their journey and they're really just like this is the way this is the methodology and first i said this and then i wrote that and then i prayed this way and then i talked to my guides and i didn't then i did this and this and this and these are all just tools right and if something worked for them that's amazing that's great it's not to discredit their experience but you have to detach yourself from the tools and the modality and start to see what is it that you need so notice if you're somebody who's done that in the past whether you're like oh my gosh my astrology is going to tell me everything about me and so once I understand everything about all my houses then I'm going to know who I am on the inside or if I understand my human design then I'm going to know like what kind of a channeler I am or if I pull cards and I do tarot readings for myself all the time or I go to a tarot reader then I'm going to get a better feeling and understanding of what I am meant to do and who I'm meant to be when the truth of it is these are all tools these are all archetypal work and so at the end of the day you're giving away your power to these tools rather than understanding the tools are already within you these already are channeled
channel through you. And so there is the part of you that can utilize tools because yes, we love a tool. We love the thing that gets us a place and that supports us to, you know, supports us and confirms things for us. Like, yeah, absolutely. Pull that card, get that affirmation and be like, yes, the sign. It was a line, like absolutely hear that message and, you know, and, and put meaning to things. You're a human. Like you want to do that. That is part of our wiring. That's a part of our programming and also understand what part of you is giving away the power of yourself by hyper focusing on the tools rather than the thing that's already within you on the inside the next thing i want to say about your healing era is that you might be really obsessed with having something to fix all the time because that one thing that you fixed like changed everything so now you're looking for another thing now you're looking for another thing and you're looking for another thing better better more 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 and that in itself is a type of addiction and Loki, you can have an addiction to healing, an addiction to self-improvement, an addiction to fixing, an addiction to always finding something wrong so that you don't actually appreciate yourself here in this moment, right here, right now. And both things can be true. You could still have things that you want to improve upon, things you want to adjust and, you know, tweak a little bit. That's absolutely fine to have a vision and a goal for yourself. But that obsession of always having something to fix is a really, really, really big error in your healing era. So instead of finding things to fix all the time, see if you can find a little bit of gratitude for how far you've come, the work that you've put in, the effort that it took, the bravery and the courage and the inner understanding of yourself that it took to take steps for yourself, even if you felt isolated, even if you felt like nobody in your life got it, even if you felt that, oh, what is this all for? Even if you feel that you still did it and you're still doing that. So instead of finding something that's wrong with you all the time, instead of consuming so much information that is committed to telling you that you're not good enough, that you could be better, you could be faster, you could be doing more, you could be producing, you could be showing up in this other way, you could be, you could be, you could be all the could be's, should be's, would be's. Focus on what you are and focus on who you are. This moment that you've committed to is that, you know, liking yourself in the present moment is a skill set. And that's the biggest healing that you can ever do to find your own worthiness within you, to love yourself and have compassion for yourself. And that leads me to the next part, which is have compassion on your healing journey. This is so big because we get so addicted to that path of improvement, the path of fixing, the path of non-forgiveness and forgiveness. And we want to do the same thing over and over again. We don't want to actually let it settle and let it come, come back down. And that leads me to the next part about compassion. And it's compassion for yourself and compassion for other people too. It's both because you are going to be, you know, getting a different perspective of the world. Your brain chemistry is changing. Your physical body's energetics are changing too. Your spirituality is evolving. Your worldview is changing. You're seeing things in a different way. You're reprogramming your past by going and doing inner child work, going and doing inner healing work, inner teenager work, parent work, right? Trauma work, all these different things that you're doing is shifting the way that your physical energy and your physical body is. And so there might be times where you find that there's people around you who didn't do the work, you know, or you are angry at them, or you feel like, you know, you're doing all this stuff and you wish that they would elevate with you, or you feel like, you know, somebody's going, you know, they're triggering you now. Don't they know that you don't do that anymore? Like they're triggering you and there's people are going to people and you got a you, you know? And so having that compassion for yourself that it's okay that other people don't get it and it's okay that there's people who are on their own paths, their own healing, their own journey and their own expression of themselves and that's okay. And the self-compassion that you're gonna experience for yourself is really to say that, you know, sometimes it's gonna feel like you're going backwards. There's a part of you that feels that you did all the things and you're supposed to not have these triggers anymore and lo and behold, there you are feeling triggered as shit. It feels like you're regressing. It feels like you didn't want to behave this way and you know you shouldn't, but you did. And it feels like you're falling be behind. You feel like, oh no, everybody went ahead of me and now I'm still here. There's kind of that storytelling and that narrative that happens that when we're comparing ourselves and other people's journeys, our, our compassion gets a little compromised. Our compassion to know that like, it's not a race. Like, who are you racing? Like that at the end, like you die, you know, like it's life and death and you live in the middle. 
So what are you going to do with that? You can be really hard on yourself. You can say, you know, we got to push, we got to go, we got to do, we got to ho, 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 ho. And it's just this feeling of like, I'm not good enough. So this compassion piece in your healing area is so important because you're not going to rush. You're not going to try to do things outside of yourself. You're going to let it settle. You're going to give it permission to really just integrate for yourself. And that brings me to the next point is your healing era requires integration. And if this is a new word for you, integration basically means that let it settle, like let it land, you know? So all this information that you're taking in, all the breath work that you're doing, all the, you know, healing work and the courses and the communities and this and this and this and this and this, uh, let it actually settle down into your body. Start to apply what that actually looks like in your life. So cool, you forgave your parents or you forgave this person or you forgave this per per part of your uh, childhood. But as soon as you're in a moment of that being triggering to you, you feel like you regressed. So put it into practice. Integration means like letting it settle and actually putting it into practice, giving that time for rest, giving that time for play, giving that time for not being committed to having homework around like what you need to improve right now. And having that space really lets your energetic body seal in the information. You get it? Things need to seal into your body because information is absolutely useless until the energy of that information can land. And that energy of the information doesn't necessarily land in our mind. It physically lands in our body. And so when you are in this pathway of trying all these different methods of healing and you're exploring and you're enjoying, leave that space for play, that joy, that experience, because why are you doing all of this in the first place? You're doing this so that you can feel good and then you can live your life. You know, <laughs> like you want to actually bother liking yourself at the end of the day. So as you continue your healing era, keep these things in mind and let me know what resonated with you in the comments below. And just remember, the world is your playground. And until next time, I will catch you soon.